Why do I ask why? Thank that amazing brain of yours for your uncontrolled curiosity. Not only does this wrinkly mess of gray matter control all your body's automatic functions, breathing, blinking, food processing, the beating of your heart, but it also empowers you to laugh, cry, create, dream, score a three-pointer in basketball, learn, paint, beat your sister at Mario Kart, and ask questions. The brain is the master of your nervous system and the source of your personality. No other organ in nature is as mysterious. What exactly is between my ears anyway? One of your body's largest organs, your brain is three pounds of fat and proteins condensed in a mass with a tofu-like texture. Its contents come in two colors, gray and white. Gray matter. Your brain contains about 100 billion nerve cells called neurons. They make up your brain's gray matter. White matter. Your neurons communicate with one another by sending electrical signals and forming chemical connections in a network of nerve fibers called dendrites and axons, which form your brain's white matter. This communication between neurons is what's responsible for your every thought, memory, movement, and automatic bodily function. Are gray and white matter really gray and white? Eh, close enough. Gray matter has more pink and yellowish tints mixed in. White matter is really more pinkish. It turns white when it dies and has been preserved as a lab specimen. How much of my body's energy does my brain use? The electrical messages bouncing across your brain at any given time outnumber the messages zipping through the world's telecommunication networks. All that activity requires enough electricity to power a dim light bulb. That might not sound like much until you consider the brain uses 20% of the body's energy, but is only about 2% of its weight. Why do we use only 10% of our brains? It's a reassuring idea for anyone who thinks they have superpowers or hidden artistic talents. We could accomplish amazing feats if we could just tap into our unused reserves of gray matter. It's also a total myth. We use nearly every part of our brain all the time. Even a simple activity like brushing your teeth, walking toward the toothbrush, squeezing out just enough toothpaste, keeping track of which teeth you've cleaned as you brush away, activates a small electrical storm across your brain as the various lobes, cortices, and cerebellum work together to brush, rinse, spit, and remember to floss. The activity in your brain never stops, even when you sleep. What protects my brain from injury? Your brain is a delicate organ that needs all the protection it can get. That thick skull of yours is its first line of defense, followed by three sturdy membranes called meninges. Fluid fills the gaps between these membranes, cushioning the brain from impacts. A special blood-brain barrier made of special cells acts like a security perimeter in the brain's circulatory system and keeps out anything that might contaminate your sensitive network of neurons. Why am I smarter than, say, a dolphin or a chimpanzee? Credit for your uniquely human intellect, your ability to solve algebra problems or play the electric guitar or wonder about the function of your own brain, goes to your cerebrum. Accounting for 85% of your brain's mass, it's far larger and more complex than the cerebrums of other brainy animals, such as dolphins, whales, and elephants. It's also home to your brain's most important lobes, the sub-processors of that supercomputer between your ears. The frontal lobes process your thoughts and speech, as well as learning, emotions, and some types of memory. Your senses of pain, touch, heat, and cold are handled by the parietal lobes behind the frontal lobes. The occipital lobes at the back of the brain decode visual information from our peepers. The temporal lobes near your temples process memories and sounds transmitted from your ears. The entire cerebrum is enveloped 
in a layer of gray matter called the cerebral cortex. Its deeply wrinkled surface packs maximum processing power into the tight quarters of your skull. Why does my body move when I want it to? Your cerebellum, the second largest part of your brain, coordinates the movement of your muscles and keeps you from tumbling over when you walk. Why do I breathe without thinking about it? Credit goes to your brainstem, the autopilot for your most important automatic functions, breathing, blood pressure, and heart rate. Why do I remember things? Every time you experience something new, electrical charges fire through the white matter in your brain, creating chemical links that form a network of pathways out of neurons. Your memories are stored in these connected neurons and the connections become stronger and expand into other neurons with repeated exposure to the new experience. Practicing a song on the guitar makes the same neural networks fire again and again, becoming stronger and thus making the song easier to play. Spending time with a new friend reinforces old connections and builds new ones as you learn about your pal's habits. As you learn and gain new memories, your brain structure changes and makes new connections. The brain you have today will be different tomorrow. Why do I forget things? When it comes to retaining memories, your brain is practically a bottomless pit, one that continues to deepen throughout your life. So why did you forget where you put your towel at swim practice? It turns out your brain is equipped with two types of memory. Short-term, powerful but fleeting, short-term memory is meant to store information, such as phone numbers, email addresses, and other humdrum everyday data, like the location of that towel at swim practice, that you won't need to recall during your golden years. As you'd expect, short-term memories don't linger. They fade even faster if you were distracted at the time the memory took shape. Maybe a teammate was talking to you while you put down your towel, or maybe you moved the towel many times during practice, and your short-term memory can't place its exact location. Long-term. Experiences move from short-term to long-term memory when they're repeated, such as when you memorize flashcards to study for a test, or accompanied by meaningful emotions and significant sensory input, such as when you scored the winning goal or the day you got your pooch as a puppy. Scientists believe your brain has a limitless capacity for long-term memories, but sometimes you can't recall a particular detail without help from sensory clues. A familiar smell is a powerful reminder, or the recollections of friends involved in the event. Scientists blame such forgetfulness on a flaw in our ability to retrieve memories, a flaw that non-scientists call a brain fart. What mysteries remain about the brain? Some big ones. Although scientists are mapping out the brain's neural network and have a decent understanding of which parts do what, they still don't know where your mind, aka your consciousness, personality, and everything else that makes you you, fits into the puzzle. Maybe someday you'll solve that mystery, if you put your mind to it. Thank you for watching Facts 101. We hope you learned some interesting new facts. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time.